Hi all, welcome to Simple Engineering, Engineering Simplified. I am Neetu Rahul. Today we are going to discuss about Hall Effect. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's move to the video. Hall Effect It is discovered by Edwin Hall in 1879. So the Hall effect means it is a production of a voltage difference. That voltage difference is called whole voltage and that voltage difference across a current carrying conductor in the presence of a magnetic field. And there will be a voltage that is generated which will be perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field. So in this figure you can see a semiconductor bar where we have two contacts A and B. To A we have applied positive terminal and B it is negative terminal. We have the length of this semiconductor bar as L, thickness as T and width as W. Then we have electric field and magnetic field which is applied to this semiconductor bar. So there will be a total force on the single hole due to the electric and magnetic field. So that force is denoted as F which is equal to Q epsilon plus V plus B. In this figure you can see the semiconductor slice where we have two contacts A and B. Uh, we have thickness, length and width of the bar. So in the first figure A denotes this semiconductor bar where we have not applied a magnetic field. That is without magnetic field how the hall and electron flow will be. Figure B shows if we applied a magnetic field in Z direction how the flow of electrons or holes, the charge carriers, how it will affect our there. Figure C shows if we applied an electric field along Y axis then there will be a low potential and a high potential and a voltage is generated. There will be a difference in voltage. That voltage is Hall voltage. So after the Hall voltage is produced, figure B sh D shows after the generation of the Hall voltage. So in the Y direction, there will be a force that is equal to Fy Q into epsilon Y minus Vx into Bz. In order to maintain a steady state flow of Halls through the length of the bar, the electric field must balance the product so that the net force along the y direction will be equal to zero. So epsilon y that is uh, the net force along y direction that should be equal to zero. The electric field that we are applying in the y direction is denoted as epsilon y which is equal to Vx into Bz. And the establishment of this electric field is called Hall effect. And the, there is a potential difference that is called the Hall voltage. So Hall voltage will be produced between the two contacts A and B. So VAB that is the Hall voltage which is denoted as epsilon YW. So now for the Halls the current density which is denoted as JX which will be equal to QP naught VX where VX is our drift velocity that is equal to JX by QPS that is in terms of current density we have rearranged that equation. So substituting this in the equilibrium equation we get epsilon y is equal to jx by qp0 into bx and this we can take it as a proportionality constant that we denote it as rh where it is the Hall coefficient. So the Hall field that is proportional to the product of the current density and the magnetic flux density. So current density that is denoted as Jx and magnetic flux den density is denot denoted as Bz. So the measurement of the Hall voltage for a non-current and magnetic field yields a value for the Hall concentration P0. So P0 means it is equal to 1 by Q into Rh where Rh is our Hall coefficient. So this we can rearrange it as Jx that is in terms of your current density and magnetic flux density. So it will be equal to Jx Bz by Q epsilon y. This we can rearrange it as in terms of current Ix by 
W T into B Z by Q into epsilon Y. We have uh, taken in terms of Hall voltage. That is V A B. So finally, we will get P naught. Our Hall concentration will be equal to I X B Z by Q T into V A B. Since all of the quantities in the right hand side can be measured, the Hall effect can be used to give a accurate values for the carrier concentration. So, if a measurement of the resistance R is made, the sample resistivity we can calculate. That is, rho is equal to R W T by L. That we can write in terms of V C D by I X by L by W T. Since the conductivity sigma is equal to one by rho, that is given as Q P. In mu p by into p naught, the mobility that is simply the ratio of Hall effect and resistivity. So we can take mu p is equal to sigma by q p naught, which is equal to sigma that we we have taken in terms of resistivity one by rho by q into p naught. We can write in terms of Hall coefficient. So it will be one by q R H. So rearranging this, we will get R H by rho. So the measurements of the Hall coefficient and the resistivity over a range of temperatures that yield the plot of majority carrier concentration and the mobility west in terms of temperature. So such measurements are extremely useful in the analysis of semiconductor materials and the negative value of Q that is used for electrons and the Hall effect, Hall voltage that is VAB and the Hall coefficient RH that will be negative. So the measurement of the sign of the Hall voltage is a common technique for determining an unknown sample whether that is an p-type or n-type. So hope this is clear for everyone. If you find this useful, please share it with others. Thank you.